Hi everybody, Joe here. You know what that means? Grab yourself a brew and a cheeky biscuit and let's have a catch up. So today I'm going to do another masculine type card or a, a card that would suit um, males or females really. Um, it, it was after my message asking for more masculine cards. So yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I forget, it may have been yesterday or the day before. We blame lockdown for that. Are you the same? I don't even know what day it is anymore. Anyway, um, I did a couple of designs for you using Lavinia stamps with a masculine theme. So today I thought I'd come with some All and Create products and we'll have a look how we can use their designs for a masculine take. And this is the card we're going to make today. But I have done another one using the same background technique, the same stencil, but a couple of different stamps. Oh, I just noticed I've used the same. You can tell I like this little wooden embellishment. Um, and obviously we're going for a nautical theme. Um, just looking for something different. I think often with men's cards, we do the, the red wine or the beer, don't we? And we do the um, maybe the, the sport, the football, the, the golf. So I'm thinking general. And I know a lot of you... Um, donate your cards to charity and for charity um, when they're selling the cards it's nice for almost for a larger target audience um, and I think nautical can be great because they can be for um, obviously um, pick males that like nautical that maybe you can get that fishing theme in there you can bring boating um, yacht do they like water sports but also um, if somebody's going abroad and um, taking a gap year I don't know with COVID, can we still do that? Who knows? But I do think these are a good type of, and also summer, I nearly said summer holidays, can we take those? <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's just nice to send a, a, a nautical theme card saying, do you know what, let's catch up next year, maybe the year after. Who knows when we can? So I'll just show you this one first. And, and this is a lovely stamp set, which I'll show you. And this one is All and Create. And it's 232 and it's called Navigate Home and it's by Bipasha. And what I love with this one is as well as having this sort of nautical, that the, the anchor's beautiful. And, and again, this, you could use the bird on its own if you wanted, but I love the binoculars here. Now you could, again, what I love with the binoculars, you could do almost like a country. You could do a green background and the binoculars, um, you know, have you got a friend who's a twitcher? I think that's what they call bird watchers. If not, I apologise now I may have offended somebody. Who knows? <laughs> you know me by now. I don't rehearse these. Unfortunately, it's like we're having coffee together. And you know when you have those conversations with friends where you know if you say something silly, they'll, they'll laugh with you, not at you. I'm hoping we've got to that stage. <laughs> I'm hoping we've been together long enough now. But anyway, I digress. The binoculars, are, I think, are lovely. And also, if... um. I know um, we've got Father's Day coming up in June here and even for my dad, I could put the binoculars, I'd do a nice, um, the background we're doing actually now, we're doing it nautical, I'd do it in browns and make almost a wooden background and put my binoculars on. And and I think that is a, a very useful, when I'm getting stamp sets, for me, they have to have lots of uses and there are lots of uses for this. Also, um. You could use that. I mean, I say the anchor on its own. So many. I mean, even I've got to say, if you wanted a twist on an anniversary card, what about your my anchor? If it was for your husband, you know, it just sort of. I hate to use that cliche think outside the box, but you know, that's the lines I'm going along. So that is for, for this one here. The one we're actually going to do today. Obviously, I just like to show you lots of inspiration. You know me. So the one we're doing today, this one's also by Bipasha actually, and it's called Sea Life. And this is hashtag 390. Now again, this is a lovely set because we're going to use Mr. Um, is he an octopus or a squid? Hmm, maybe I should have looked it up. I, hmm. Anyway, this lovely stamp here, and I love the hat, the addition of the hat. We've also got this gorgeous whale at the bottom. Now, I must admit, I did a canvas with this on and, and it was just, yeah, he worked so well on a canvas. And again, if you want to decoupage him, it's nice and easy to cut out. And I know some ladies have dexterity problems. So that is a nice image to cut out and decoupage and you've got all this behind. 
and then the seahorse. Now you can't see it quite properly there. If I take the stamp off, let me turn this round, put it on here. In fact, you can see both those. Look at the detail on those. The seahorse particularly is beautiful. Now again, don't see horses mate for life. Maybe you could do an anniversary card with that. Um, there are so many uses for these. And like I say, we're going along that the, the, they are great for male cards. There's no reason why you couldn't use it for a, a female card. I mean, I think this would look lovely with some little flowers. I love mixing the nautical, the florals. Again, you know, totally up to you. But those are the lovely three images. And I think you've got three good, strong images on that um, stamp set. Now, let me put my stamp back on because otherwise... That one, I have to say, I have cut it out and it's not as easy to cut out. When I went to decoupage, it was only when I was cutting it out, I thought, oh, schoolboy error wasn't the best one to cut out. So obviously with this one, I'm just decoupaging the hat. Isn't it funny how you sort of learn from your, I won't say mistakes, from your um, trial and errors? <laughs> And I'm starting with, again, this is going on a six by six card blank. So my base card is either 14 centimetres square. Look at that. We've got splats on it already. Um, in fact, we'll use that side. Or five and a half inches. I think we, the other day we worked that out. I'm going to use a, a limited palette. So we're going on the, the nautical theme. So I'm using some oxides just because they're what I have on my desk. And that's the honest truth of it. I have got um, normal distress inks, but they're on my shelf and I'm um, one of those crafters I like to use what I've got on my desk now weathered wood is a beautiful base color and we're going to use this is a great technique it's a really old technique and um, loads of us use it but it's one of those you easy forget about and it's DTP direct to paper and all we're going to do is and I want to come across about the width you'll notice the width we can get about three of the width of the felt pad across this so I'm going to just drag and you hold the pad at about 45 degrees and we're just going to drag three times down simple turn it through um 180 degrees I had to think there and we're just going to drag back Oh dear, that's a football term, drag back. <laughs> and we're going to, and that's all I want with my grey. And that's my nice base for my grey. And then I'm going to bring in some Stormy Sky, which is a lovely light blue. And I'm going to do the same, but I'm actually going to angle my ink pad higher up. Because I really want to catch the edges. So what I want to do, and the idea is, if I can show you, that the grey ink has almost given that weathered wood, which is funny because that's what the ink's called, appearance. But now I'm bringing the blue in and I want more of the blue at the top, but also that line to almost make it look like it's a wood panel. And again, this is beautiful if you use a light brown and a dark brown. And I want more at the sides. So I'm going to turn it round and do the same again. So that's why I angle my ink pad more up. If it was flatter, it would get blue over the hole. I hope that makes sense. Again, practice, have a go a couple of times. Now I just want to catch some colour at the sides. So I'm just going to sort of bring my ink pad along the side a little. And again, I'm just catching that side. If I wanted more at the top, I could come in and the same this way. But I'm happy with that. I love these bits that it really looks like a piece of, um, you know, the weathered wood that you see at the um, at the seaside. And I love that combination. Those two colours, weathered wood and stormy sky, work really well together. And again, if you're suffering from, you know, lack of mojo, mojo. I know a couple of ladies have been in hospital and, and just got back. And, and it's lovely to know that you're back with us and, and watching us, you know. If you're struggling at the minute, you could actually do far worse than make yourself some of these backgrounds. And just, if you get tired really quickly, make yourself a couple of backgrounds and then that's it for the day. But then as you build up your energy and start to feel better, you can then come in and maybe stamp, maybe put a die on top of the background. But at least you'll have done something and you'll feel better, but it won't tax you too much. Even just making one background, the achievement you'll feel Honestly, it'll really make you feel better. Now, I'm going to bring in 
my fan brush, as you know, is always in my water pot. And what I like to do is pick up this ink here. We don't want to waste it. And we're just going to tap. We're just going to add some ink splats just because we can. And again, just for that background. But what's nice is if you pop your fingers in this and put those on the card, you almost get some bigger splats. And you can even put your finger in the water and you'll just get what's nice. <laughs> I was going to say you're actually adding your DNA, but maybe that's not good. <laughs> A bit like finger painting when we were little. And it just adds, can you see, as these start, and again, it's just that nice random background. Because when you're making a wood effect background, if you look at wood, be it weathered wood or your mahogany or whatever, obviously you've got the knots in there you've got it's very it's not very uniform so it's nice to just add these and to think that it's just a bit of water and a bit and a bit of your fingers but again do give your fingers a wipe and what you're going to do is let that dry but what we'll do we'll just normally you would let it dry naturally because you get a much better effect but obviously, I know we're having a coffee and a catch-up, but um, we haven't got all day, have we? If only we had. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Now, while this is drying, I do need to ask you, one of um, our lovely crafters messaged me on Facebook, which I'm more than happy, it's lovely to hear from you, and she's in Virginia, and she asked me what a cheeky biscuit is. Well, I've got to be honest, a cheeky biscuit... Or sometimes at workshops we have cheeky snacks and it's a biscuit that you have when actually you're trying to be good and you shouldn't really be having one. And it's the sort I have when I'm in the house on my own and I'm thinking I just fancy something with my cup of tea. What shall I have? And I know really I shouldn't so I just have a cheeky biscuit. Now what I need to know in the comments is what would your biscuit of choice be for your cheeky biscuits? I mean I don't know are you a this isn't a, a, a selling one, is it? Nobody's going to tell me off for names. Are you a, are you a, di a, nearly said dinosaur. Are you a digestive sort of person? You know, I'm thinking, are you a, do you like coconut rings? I know my friend Lisa does. She likes a little one of those, she does. Or are you a bourbon sort of person? Adam likes bourbons. Custard creams, are you a, I mean, there is so many. Gary Baldy. Do you remember Gary Baldy? Do they still have those? So I need you to think, what would be your cheeky biscuit of choice? And I'm not talking cake, but you see, then we go Jaffa cake. Is that a cake or a biscuit? I've got to be honest, I just like a nice, we call them half coated. So it's the digestive with chocolate. I think that would probably be mine. Plain, plain chocolate. Hmm. But anyway, have a think. So, while you're thinking, it's really good because do you know what? Your background's dry. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to stamp on that now. So I'll bring in my, my stamping mat. And I'm going to turn my work round. You know I like to stamp onto the side. And we're going to use the black. Our Versafine Claire. And what's lovely with this, you've got so much background, the script in the background on this stamp. The actual detail that Bipasha has drawn is just phenomenal. So and I'm just going to place him in the middle. I know I don't normally stamp in the middle, but I think this design is so strong. I'm going to stamp him and again, give your ink time to soak in because you've got all that oxide ink you've got the water and if it's not quite dry remember your blocks are flexible so again just give them a bit of a bit of a flex make sure you press always keep one hand on your block though and look at that the detail there, as I say, it, it's just phenomenal. Now, what I have done is I've already stamped the hat and cut it out. And I've just watercolour painted it. So what we'll do is we're going to add some colour to him. 
and for me the easiest way of adding colour is just to go in with my inks and what we're going to do is we're going to come in with Mermaid Lagoon and I'm just going to pop it on my mat and again in my paint in my little pot here I have a little just a little pot of water and every day I put my water in my pot and I have I mean this out of the way just three brushes in there I have my fan brush in case I want to do my splats and then I have two other brushes a fine rigger brush and then another brush and these are just what I use for my watercolour painting and I must admit they're just so handy I never have to look those are the three and I find really I mean some um, crafters love water brushes if you're happy with a water brush by all means use a water brush for me I don't know why I just prefer an actual paint brush now I know we've already got some paint on here some ink on here but it's nice and easy just to add some ink on top and again I just find for me this is quite a quick way of adding colour and I'm just going to come in now and just take a little bit more time here where we've got these nice, um, I don't know, are they tendrils, tentacles? His arms, we'll call them his arms. Now, again, you can choose any colour. I mean, if pencils are your choice, you could use your ink tens pencils. But at the minute, I'm really into adding my base layer with the ink and water. And then I'm going to come in and add more detail with my pastel pencils, my chalk pastel pencils. But I think we all go through phases, don't we? And I must admit, that's just the phase I'm in. I just find, A, this bit is really speedy. And then when I bring in the detail with my pastel, for me, I find it really pops and I get a good result. But it doesn't take a lot of time and skill, I've got to be honest. I mean, if you want to take your time, by all means do. But that's all I need to do for that. And what I did when I've paint, when I've watercolour painted, I just used a brown, I used vintage photo for his hat, but I've just added some Mermaid Lagoon look just on the band of his hat, so it'll tie in really nicely. So I'll oh, mop that up. And again, always clean up where you can. Now, while that's drying, what we're going to do is just add some little bubbles. Now, again, when you're talking sea and water, this is ideal. So this is a stencil and it's number 39 called Lots of Dots and it's by Abs. And, you know, it's, it's just perfect because, again, if you're talking anything, you could leave it just as it is if you wanted. But I think it's nice just to add a few with this now if you wanted to make it more textural you textural is that a word um you could come in with um texture paste that would be nice but i'm thinking and again choose which bit you want i want that largish one there um i'm thinking just the blue will be fine for me and i'm just randomly always lift up and have a look yeah that's deep enough i don't want it too i don't want it too in your face i don't want to overpower just want a few again just to build in that background i think sometimes with men's cards if we're not careful we almost short change them we think because it's a, a masculine card we don't need to we think we can't put sort of embellishments in detail on but you know what there are so many lovely masculine embellishments if you look around gorgeous things we can use so speaking of embellishment i bought a, a lovely pack of these lovely little wooden embellishments and you can see there was the boat and um, there's shells but i thought the anchor i like the boat for the masculine card and the anchor here and just so it ties in i don't need to gesso it or anything i'm just going to put some ink and i'm going to add that there and i've got room for my sentiment there so again it follows this lovely line so we'll pop that to one side, pop the lid on there. Again, keeping it all nice and clean as we're going, just helps keeping in that nice routine. 
and again don't forget with your stencil what we can do with that is have we got a spare piece of card there we go we're going to give that a spritz oh not the light all right sorry eric eric's just having a little sleep here so he's going to get a bit wet but never mind for those new and thank you to the new subscribers we've got it's lovely welcome to the madhouse Eric's my black Labrador, and when I'm crafting, he likes to sleep under my desk. <laughs> As one lady said, she was grateful to find out it wasn't my husband. So, no, he's working, thank goodness. He's not asleep under my desk. Oh, yeah, that's worked well. So, again, to clean your stencil, don't forget, give it a quick spritz. And look at that. I must admit, I love these backgrounds because, again, you've got two for one. Now, although you've got a space there, I'm thinking the um, seahorse would look gorgeous stamped just down there. So there you go. You've got your free background ready to create. And again, that's getting your juices, your creative juices flowing and that's ready for the seahorse. And again, often that's the way that you sort of keep going. So back to our little man here. And I've got some of those um, pastel, chalk pastel pencils. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> Let's grab a drink of water. <clears throat> you know this naughty throat of mine. <clears throat> I do apologise. I'm sure one day I'll actually be able to do a whole video with, without it going. But until then... <laughs> so the chalk pastel pencils, the ones I'm using today... Because um, I promised I'd, I'd give um, the numbers. And this one is... Um, so this one is 405. And that's just one of the blues. And then I've gone for brown, which is 610. And a yellow, which is 205. And um, again, the blue, I'm just going to add... I mean, if I show you the difference, look... So that's with and without. And for me, it just brings the image alive more. And again, it doesn't take a lot. So I'm going, I'm going for the blue as sort of like where I've got some shade. And here, look, you'll, but Pash has given you, if you look at your artwork, if you're a bit, little bit scared of shade and not sure where to put it, look at the artwork and you'll see You've got guidelines there of where the shade is. Now, because the pastel, I'm just using a cotton bud, and again, it is a biodegradable cotton bud. And because it's chalk, I'm just smudging it a little, just to fix it. I quite often use my finger, but I thought I'd be good, seeing as I'm teaching you properly, I'll use a cotton bud. You can get some little nibs, craft nibs to use. And I just give it a little blow. Now what I am going to do is come in with the yellow. And I'm just going to use yellow as my highlight. Now it's quite funny. Because it's going on blue, it gives quite a greenish tint. But I, I don't mind that at all. I just think it almost... I want it to look... Um, we used to have some fish and I think they were called neon tetras and they were quite sort of, well, neon looking. And I just think the good job with this is, look, the other end's my yellow end so I can blend the yellow here. Just want to give him that nice sort of, I mean, he's such a lovely character look. Uh, for me, that just makes him pop. Now on his hat, I want to add a little bit more shade. So again, I'm gonna come in here with the brown. And then I'm going to add a little bit of highlight with my yellow just here. And we'll just blend that out. And what I will do is just add a little bit of brown on here so that if I don't decoupage it quite perfectly, it won't show because I've got the brown. And as you can see, it really starts coming to life. Now, on our little bubbles, again, we can use these two just to add a little bit of shade. And again, for me, I always have the light source up here. So I always do the bottom right-hand corner 
just because it's easier for me and again we're just going to smudge it and what's lovely about this is the way it smudge it almost does that shading for you look looks like you've spent ages and we haven't have we I'm not doing the little ones just the large ones and for the highlight, just to keep our colours, instead of adding a white line, I'm just going to come in with the yellow because I think it blends nicely. And we'll just smudge that. There we go. Maybe just, I think we need a bit of yellow here. There, that balances it better. And as you can see, it's just building up nicely, but we're not doing anything difficult, are we? Just colouring in. What I do want to add is some shade. Now, quite often I use my charcoal pencils for this. I could use my chalk pastel pencils, but recently I've been using my clean colour. And this lovely grey colour here, which is actually called light grey, I keep on my desk now because I found it's lovely. With it having a brush nib, it's so lovely to add my shade. And it works really well on top of the, the um, ink. So I'm just adding underneath, so any areas that are under, I'm not going all the way around, I only want to add it to the areas underneath where I'll have the shade. And I'm actually going to go around the base of his hat, so it almost gives his face a little bit of shade. And then what I will do is add a little bit of shade under the largest of these bubbles. Again, just in that bottom right hand corner and I'm going to come under this word here. And where my anchor is going to go, I think we'll put that there. We'll add some, we'll just draw around the base of it there and add some shade. So I've got to be honest, I, I think that's really coming together well, isn't it? Now, if you want, you can add... A little bit of where his eyes, just a little white there. I'm going to add a little bit on my... I'm going to add a few little white highlights on his hat just before I stick it down. And if you want, you can add some white highlights to the little suction bits on his. And often these things are the things that make the difference. Now, when it comes to glue, I'm using that pin flare glue again, just because for me, I like, like my pin flare. And what I'm going to do is just pop a blob in the middle. I've slightly shaped the cap and I'm just going to spread some round the edges because I want the edges to be quite flat, but if possible, it to be raised in the middle. And as I say, this brad oil is perfect for this. You can use a cocktail stick if you want. So, and again, we've got some wiggle time so we can get that perfectly in position there. And then our little anchor. Again, I'll just squeeze up a tiny bit of the glue and just add it. Um, you might prefer to use a dry, clear glue here. If you're worried about any of the ink showing. Again, if you've got metal embellishments, they would look nice. Like I say, because it's a man's card, don't think you can't use embellishments. And again, with the pin flare, always make sure you squeeze it up to the end and then pop the lid on and that way it won't dry out. Perfect. And then we just need a sentiment. Now, for my original one, I've used a, a roll of the, the washi tape. But what I might do on this one, I've treated myself to one of these lovely Dymo, I think they're called, machines. And you can make some lovely ticker tape. As you know from watching, I got a bit obsessed with ticker tape recently. So a couple of the ladies in the workshop put me onto this. And I've, everything in the house is now labelled. I have to say I've gone a bit balmy with it. But Father's Day is coming up, so I've made Special Dad. So I'm actually going to put this on here. So I'm going to put Special there. Just cut that there, I think. 
No, I didn't cut that very straight, did I? I should have gone with where I cut it with the machine, shouldn't I? This could take a while. Anyway, talk amongst yourselves. Mind you, you've probably got one of these. I know there's a, a lot of ladies that have already got these. I was a bit slow to the party, but I am a bit obsessed with it. What's lovely as well for Elliot and Jens and the grandchildren, we can name all their things. So now I'm thinking, do I put Dad? Do I put Dad over here? Do I put... Oh, I don't like that. No, no, I think we've got to go together here. Yeah. Now, I just need to edge it. And again, it's these finishing little things. Now, you could pop this on black card, but I'm to save weight and to save um, buying and using lots of black card. I'm just going to use my black permanent pen. And again, I do know some crafters that can literally whiz down the side of the card, but I have to use a ruler, I'm afraid. So we'll just add this faux matting and layering. And again, if you've got a, it doesn't have to be a Sharpie pen, it can be a, a Pro marker or it's just a permanent. And you could use your ink pad if you wanted. Just need to do the bottom as well. The bottom's not worked quite as dark. I don't think it looks as dark as the top. That's better. You see how that pops more on the white with it having that black frame. But always clean your ruler. You can tell what I use my ruler for, can't you? And then the last thing, let's add some nice splats with our Posca pen. See if I can get some on his hat. And this is where, yes, it does get everywhere. Let's just give it a... I think this one's running out. Oh, no, that's better. Right, stop. No pizzas, even with the Posca. And this is where people say, does it get everywhere? Yes, it does. Most of my ink pads, look, have got splats of Posca or... <laughs> so there we go. So that's the one that we've just done today. Let's just clean up that little bit of Posca there. So that's our one we've done today. That's the one that we had ready. The other thing is if you've got glossy accents, glossy accents would be lovely on this because obviously they dry and they would look add to your water droplets. And the other one that I had, we've got here. Again, just with that different stamp set. So maybe, I don't think we can get all three in. Maybe we can just over overlap these two. I'll have to keep this one on top because he's a bit wet. <laughs> well, he would be, wouldn't he? He's in the sea. Move those out the way. There we go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's given you a little bit of inspiration, just as I say, for um, masculine cards, but also if there's something just different you fancy doing. So thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for letting me come in into your craft room with you. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. And thank you for subscribing. We get new subscribers every week and I am just so grateful. I thank you for all your friendship and your support. You take care, everybody. Much love and hugs. Bye for now.